Velocity versus time graphs. Ooh. So we're looking at a velocity time graph example here. This is graph two from our sheet. Um, and we're going to do all of it together. So this will be a little bit longer of a video, but if you stick with it, we'll have all three parts, the C4, the E4, and the E5 completely done. Um, the things to remember for a velocity time graph is uh, the distance traveled is represented by the area um, between the curves, okay? And technically, if it's a positive or a negative area, you can get displacements off of that, um, more than just distances, but it is an area. You read velocity directly from the graph, and the acceleration is the slope on this one, okay? So we still have areas and slope, those are very important, um, but what we get here, uh, those will come into play when we get to these parts. Um, for now though, let's just see how we can think about an object speeding up or slowing down over our eight regions here um, for our different possible answers. Uh, a at rest, B constant positive velocity, C constant negative velocity, a D constant increase in speed, E a variable increase in speed, F a constant decrease in speed, or G a variable decrease in speed. And what we mean by a variable increase or decrease in speed is you know, maybe you've pushed the gas pedal slightly to speed up and then you slammed it. So you didn't just speed up in the same way the whole time. Um, or maybe you were on the brakes softly and then you slammed the brakes. Uh, maybe, you know, you were racing someone and you started jogging slowly and then you busted into a sprint. You sped up at a variable rate, okay? Um, so we'll talk about those from that. Um, when we are looking at a velocity time graph, uh, the best things to think about this are any time we are moving away from this center axis, you are speeding up, okay? You're speeding up. Yes, my velocity becoming more negative is still speeding up. I'm just moving faster backwards. Any time you are getting closer to that center axis, you are slowing down. That's because your velocity is getting closer to zero. You're not moving at that point, okay? So if we're going farther away, uh, we're speeding up. If we're getting closer, we're slowing down. And the only thing we need to remember at this point is curves, however they look, are variable. Straight lines are constants. So let's just work through this with that in mind. So right now, we are going like this. We have a curve on number one, which means we're a variable and we're getting closer to our x-axis at zero mark. So we're slowing down, that's a decrease in speed, and we're doing it on a curve, so that's a variable decrease in speed, g. For part two, we have a straight line, so it's a constant, and we're getting closer to that zero axis, so we are constantly decreasing our speed. That's that. For number three, we have a flat line here. Now, a flat line um, is a straight line, so it could be a constant, but let's look at where this constant is taking place. You are constantly at a velocity of zero. If you're constantly not moving, then you must be at rest. For number four, we have a straight line, which is a nice constant, but we are constantly moving away from the x-axis, which means we are speeding up. So this is a constant increase in speed. D. For number five is just the opposite. Still a straight line for a constant, but we're coming back down close to the x-axis again. We're slowing down. This is a constant decrease in speed. So this is F. Notice how two is, uh, it looks like a positive slope and five looks like a negative slope. But for a velocity graph, when we're talking about speed, which is just how fast you're moving, um, both two and five are F, okay? So be very careful about that. Uh, six has this nice curve here. A curve represents a variable. Um, so we know it's either gonna be E or G, and are we moving towards or away from the x-axis? Well, we're moving away from it, so we're speeding up. Our velocity went from nothing to two, just in the negative direction. So this is a variable increase in speed, E. Um, seven, we have a flat line, which people always get confused on this one. Uh, they think back to the position graph where on a position graph, a flat line was at rest because it had no slope. But when we read the velocity here, your velocity to begin with 
is negative 2 and to end is negative 2, which means you're moving backwards at 2 meters per second the whole time. You're constantly moving backwards at the same rate, which means that you have a constant negative velocity, c. And last but not least, if we look at part 8, this is a straight line here, so it's a constant. Are we moving towards or away from the x-axis? We're moving away from it. So this is a d constant increase in speed. Okay, so that's all we do here. We simply look, are we speeding up? Are we slowing down? Are we variable or are we straight line for constants? And then do we have anything weird where it's just a flat line uh, on the x-axis or at some negative or positive velocity? Okay. Um, if we want to do E4 and E5 when we're calculating distances and displacements, um, or E5 when we're calculating accelerations, I need to clean this up a little bit, so bring, there we go. Um, remember, if we have a velocity graph and you're looking for distances and displacements, what you're looking for are areas. So if we do this between 2 and 7 seconds, 2 seconds is right here, and 7 seconds is this point up here. Okay, so two seconds is here, seven seconds is over here. And if we want the area here, we're gonna have a tiny triangle right here and a much larger triangle right here. When we have distances, I'm just gonna find these areas and they're both gonna be positive and I'm just gonna add them both together, okay? The area of a triangle, if you remember, is one half base times height. So when I do this, I'm gonna get one half of a base, which is one, and a height, which is one. So one times one is one, divided by two is 0.5. So this has an area here of 0.5. When I look at my larger triangle, this is a base here of two. It has a height of four. Four times two is eight. Eight divided by two is four. Four plus 0.5 is 4.5. Pretty straightforward. When we do displacements, however, what we need to recognize is this area here, that's a negative area. It's underneath the x-axis. This area here is a positive area. It's on top of the x-axis. Because of this, I'm going to have 4 plus negative 0.5 for displacements, which means my displacement here is 3.5 meters. Okay? Why don't you take a second? Try this from 10 seconds right here to our 14 second marker right here and see what you can get for a distance and displacement. I'll make a funny face while this was paused. Hmm. Great. So this is the area we're looking for all here in green. It's a kind of weird shape. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it. I'm actually going to say, hey, look at this nice rectangle here that I can easily find the area of and then look at this nice triangle down here that I'm going to find the area of and add them together. So when I do this, um, the rectangle is a length times a width. So that's 2 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. This is an area of 8. Uh, the triangle is from here, 1, 2, 3. So a height of 3 and a base of 2. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6. Divided by 2 is 3. So I don't know why I paused for a second. This is an area of 8. This is an area of 3. So for distances, I just add these together. 8 plus 3 is 11. All done. For displacements, I need to see are these positive or negative. They're both underneath. All of this is underneath the x-axis. So both of these areas are actually negative. So negative 8 plus negative 3 is negative 11. It has the same magnitude, the same size, but they're underneath the axis. They are negative quantities there. Okay. So that's an important distinction to make when we're looking at distances and displacements. Um, moving on to E5, looking at the acceleration, I'll clean all this up again. Accelerations are given to us on a velocity graph by the slope. Remember, that's our rise over run. So if we want to do this from 2 to 3 seconds from here to here, we just need the slope of that line. Well, this slope right here is covering um, one meter per second upward divided by one second in time. So when I look at this, um, or a way I could think about it, 
Uh, remember, they're just final minus initial velocities. The final velocity there is zero minus the initial velocity of negative one divided by the time interval of one second, which is just one over one. So this is one meters per second squared. Pause for a second, try to do this from 12 to 14 seconds, which is right here to here, that's this line. See if you can get the slope of that sucker. Boop. Okay, we're back. Um, remember, it's just final minus initials. Our final at this point is negative five minus our initial up here is negative two. So negative five minus negative two divided by the time interval. And there's a two second time interval here, which is gonna be negative five minus negative two. So that's negative five plus two, which is negative three over two. And that's gonna be my answer here. Um, negative three halves meters per second squared. And that's it. That's all we had to do there. Nothing too crazy. It's just a slope, rise of a run, classic math class stuff. Um, and with that, uh, this is finished. I hope you found it helpful. If you've got questions, hit me up, talk to me in class. And with that, I bid you adios.